are such an asshole. One more video. Always one more video, but then I'm then I'm done. Yo, Kevin's gotta go get food. I gotta go get some more Diet Coke for my buddy because I drank all of his. Oh, what is it with you boys and your dating questions? <clears throat> background, Aaron, background. I like a girl until I found out she was obsessed with racism, sexism, and all the other phobias. It's kind of sad, like, when you like a girl because of natural things, like she's a nice girl, and, and then the indoctrination and the brainwashing just, just turns her into a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde type of thing. And you're just like, oh. It's like, you know, you're so nice just the way you are. You don't need the politics of slavery, parasitism, war, and starvation. Oh, and anti-freedom. <laughs> I guess that's not racism and sexism, but it's invariably goes, well, we need more money from people because reasons. It's like, well, wh why? Because I have the ADHDs. Resolve then to cut out politics, seeing what it does to people and stop going out with her. Uh, thank you, Ben. And I said, okay. Uh, when you, oh, but the title is, that, that's what's confused me, is like, how to get politics out of my life. I said, when you say she was obsessed about racism and sexism, you mean she was a racist herself, or she was just some SJW who obsessed about she was not a racist or sexist. When you mean get politics out of her life, you mean in terms of dating girls, work, and or your personal life. Uh, <clears throat> he expands a little bit here. No, it's, I'm, from, I'm a conservative guy, and she was an SJW obsessed with racism, sexism, homophobia, Islamophobia, anti, okay, the whole, the whole suite, everything she was told to be. From my experience, these people are puritanical zealots who constantly try to shame you just like churches. Yes, just like born-again Christians. They are, it is a religion. Another example, my uncle despises Trump and won't speak to my father anymore. Does politics inject people with rabies? The same things would apply to someone who is a conservative and obsesses over politics. Yes, and increasingly so because uh, in the olden days, the education system in college would teach you how to debate, how to have a discussion, with the common goal of improving America. What do you think? What do you think? Well, I don't know. Why do you think? Well, because of that. So there's not as much animosity. Today, uh, the education system, and certainly college, and certainly the media, form teams with a moral calling. There is this great injustice and you must stop it. <clears throat> On the left, it's the isms, it's the colonization, it's, you know, ableism. I mean, it gets so ridiculous after a while. Uh, it's basically other people have more than you do. And never mind, they worked hard for it and didn't screw up like you did. No, those rat bastards, you owe, they owe you. They've been oppressing you. So that's their, their, their side. On the Republican side, it's uh, they're all out to get you. They're all a bunch of parasites. None of them want to work. For the most part, this is true. But there are, not all Democrats are crazy left-wing communists. Some of them are hardworking people that just want to help out other people. And they think society has a moral obligation to help the poor, the destitute, the elderly, the infirm, and lazy-ass parasites who don't want to work. We end up collecting about 95% of that money. But don't look at the budget. Don't whatever you do, my good Democrat, hardworking, blue-collar Democrat friends, don't look at that budget because then you might realize you're not a Democrat. Anyway, the point is back in the olden days, you could have a civil discourse, politics being the competition of ideas when different candidates would run against one another and then people would get a choice and say, all right. <clears throat> but now it is a religion. Uh, and especially with millennials today um, and now Gen Zers coming online, where all they have done, and you see it in the schools, it's all about the isms, the racism, the discrimination, transgenderism, whatever. Rank leftist propaganda to, to get them to have a religion, to get them all fervored up so they go vote for the right people in power. Those people can have power. And then also to give them some kind of value in life without them having to work. Like, I wrote a piece called Your Gender and skin color has no value. And the short point version was that you didn't produce anything of value just because you're you know, Asian or Hispanic or a female. That's where, you, that's where you were born, it's a trait. Well, to get accomplishment, to become a great man or woman, it takes, requires work, sacrifice, discipline, make a great painting, compose a great music piece, to build a nice building, do whatever it is, raise a good family, be a great accountant. Uh, and they darn well know human nature is lazy, and so they say, well, you're a great person if you just, that hog guy, that pansy, if you protest against guns, then you're a hero. And, and 
they get attention and they get heroism, they get validation. And the key thing is, above all, they didn't have to work. And so that's, um, that's where this obsession comes from. Now, there are people on the right as well where they got nothing else going on and go to any college Republican party, you'll meet them. Or college party, or co college Republican party meet meetup. Go to any group there, you'll, you'll see um, the same kind of social justice warriorism except on the, on the right side. Uh, but it is not so much that it's the politics as that it gives them a religion and an excuse not to work and some morality to their existence. But the key thing is that they don't have to work. I'm for that children. Well, good for you, because I know so many people who are against them. <laughs> so that once, once you have that emotion, that religion, and then above all else, that fear of work threatened, like your entire existence has been, you know, campaigning against Trump. Did you see all the people crying when Hillary lost? It's because they realized that they pissed away the past two, three years of their lives. And then the, the crying and that one woman screaming, I thought it was a guy, but it turned out to be a woman, screaming, like you got nothing else going on. Like when Obama won, I was upset, but I had, you know, I had things going on. I had a girl and she's gonna suck my dick and I had a job and I had friends and I had activities and I rode motorcycles. I actually had a lot of fun during the Obama administration. <laughs> Didn't like where the country was going, paid a lot in taxes, but that was a damn fun administration. I had to have that much fun since Reagan. Uh, but fun is, but because I can separate the two. These people can't because that's all they got in life is, is the religion of politics. Uh, two, get politics out of everywhere. Politics took up a ton of my time in the past and made me boring. I try to stop following the stuff, but it's always brought up around friends when, eat with, when eating with people, etc. Yeah, because a lot of people, that's all they got. They, now it's on the internet. Now it's all, oh, Facebook is all politics, Twitter is all politics. Um... Now I take it as a compliment when people say, hey, Ben, uh, you don't know what happened? Where have you been the last two years? What do you talk about instead of politics? Well, see, in the old days, you talk about philosophy and economics and history and kids and what did Bob do and other people? And, hey, what do you think about this? You joke and you make fun of one another or cigars. There were, I know this may shock a lot of people, but the world is full of things to talk about that has nothing to do with politics. But you can talk about anything. Um... Three, bottom line, politics has turned many people rabid. What the hell happens since childhood? Um, the education system brainwashing people to be leftists and social media or the internet in general. And that's, there's your answers. Kids are coming out of college, coming out of high school. Forget it, the number one thing is not that they're gonna become an accountant or they're gonna have a job or a future or life for kids. It's I'm a Democrat, I'm a, le I, I'm a vegan, I'm this, I'm that. And it took absolutely nothing, it took absolutely nothing. So they're already given an identity, a religion, a cause, a passion um, by the teachers, sometimes by the parents. And um, so that's it. And then you got the internet, now everybody goes and throws it on. I only happened to do it because many years ago, it, it was, I was there before it went pop. I was like the Republican, the one Republican at parties in 1994. There was no internets. <laughs> Technically libertarian, but yeah. Uh, um, now everybody can do it, you know? It's like being an author. Anyone can do it, look at me. Even he can be an author. I should be like on the face of Amazon's books, you know, like, even this guy can be an author. Uh, what the hell happened since childhood? Well, that's another thing, since childhood, uh, when you're kids, you're kids, and even then, I'm afraid what would happen, you know, there was that nine-year-old kid who committed suicide because everyone picked on him because he came out as gay. When I was nine, we were like trying to find frogs and playing baseball. And um, I think parents have failed you, the adults have failed you, and um, I'm, I'm kind of scared. But you grew up, that's the other thing, and this is the world that you're in. You know, this, is the, this is the world, uh, and it sucks. So how do you keep politics out of your life? Um, <clears throat> simple, you don't do any social media. I mean, I know I have to do social media for my job, I gotta do YouTube, obviously. Um, but I don't watch Fox News, I don't watch CNN, I don't read the newspaper. I kind of, if, if anything, I pick up the politics through podcasts or Facebook, but tangentially. Um, I've come to the point that unless it directly affects me, um, I don't care. Like, for example, about the only real election I care about right now in these midterms is if Keith Ellison gets in as our attorney general, and, or not attorney general, yeah, oh, district attorney, what's he running for? In the state. Um, then I'm definitely selling my house because it's, it's like, no, nah, I, I don't care to be in a state that, that 
uh, frankly, is going to hire a, a, a an anti-white. I hate to say it. I think he is racist. I, you know, it's hard to prove that. What is in one man's soul? But the the distinct impression I get is he is definitely anti-white. He is a Marxist. Uh, the Muslim thing bothers me less than anything else. I don't care that he's Muslim, uh, but it's just he is a rank, rabid leftist, and I don't think he likes white people. But anyway, uh, that's about the only thing I really care about in politics that's coming up this time around. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I'm, life is too. And then you go have fun. You go live your life. You go, you go do what you want. I mean, I went golfing. Now I work down the house today. Uh, I, but when I get back home, I'm going to be driving out to Sturgis. Riding around South Dakota, I'm gonna smoke cigars. I am not gonna let politics waste my life. The only reason I dip my toe into politics is to make money, because people pay me for it. Um, and I suggest you do the same. You know, vote Republican, vote Libertarian, vote, you know, do your civic duty, uh, and then that's it. That's really about it, and then you're free to go. And you can, it doesn't matter whose team wins, because you're out having fun. And it's funny, you know, Democrats or Republicans, liberals or conservatives, they're all miserable no matter who's in office. And, you know, if you're going to let a guy like Trump, Trump has, is, has taken away about 5 to 6% of everybody's life who's on the left. You have to say, this man has wiped away, he has destroyed 5, 6, 7% of people's lives on the left. And I say, why 5, 6, 7%? Because he's in office for four years. <clears throat> And most people live to about 80, so that's about six, five and a half, six percent of people's life. He makes people miserable. He makes, for the next four years, he's going to ruin people's lives who let him. And Obama, he pissed me off, but I didn't let him. I went to Alaska, I had fun. Da, da, da. So that's what you do. Vote. Hey, anybody going to vote the right way? Nope. It's a socialist shithole. I mean, okay, bye. I mean, maybe invest to hedge against it. I'm looking at investing in property in Poland. Uh, but. Yeah, that's that. You do what you can do, and then you go have fun. Because they win in the end if you let politics consume you. That's what happens. They win in the end if you let politics consume you. All right, that's it. Kevin's got to get to the office to upload this. I gotta go do that. We'll see you guys later. Toodles.